We've received quite a bit of interest in my free to be workshop. So to that effect, beneath this video is a link that will give you a description for the workshop. And we've also included a special discount. So if that's something you would be interested in, I would invite you to click that link and I hope that you would find the course to be quite beneficial. Anytime you engage with someone else, whether it's in a one-on-one -on -one relationship or if it's in a group setting, the topic of control is just kind of there in the middle of that relationship that you have. And we need to figure out who's going to be in control of what. And in the best case scenario, that's okay. Uh, when we have a healthy form of control in a relationship, well, we might just be talking about having a certain amount of predictability or conscientiousness or reliability or kind of an organizational flow chart. And so in healthy relationships, we have a sense of us, a sense of we, and we try to figure out how we're going to blend well with one another. Now, Let's introduce the narcissist into that equation. And when they engage with you, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or inside a group, they already have a thought in mind that says, well, someone in fact does need to be in control here. And when you know it, it happens to be me. Aren't, aren't you lucky that I'm the one that's going to tell everybody how things are going to be? And they do want to be in control, but it's more than that. A, a narcissist attempts to be in control arise from that individual's attitude of entitlement. It's like it, it's not like um, they're just going to say, well, I, I want to have things done in a particular kind of way. But it's like, well, this is me we're talking about. And I'm someone who's quite special and I have my needs, my preferences and desires. And so as we try to figure out who's going to be in control, let's just filter it all through me because I deserve it. And I deserve to have the final word here. And, and as a result, they can come off as egotistical or insensitive or bossy or overbearing. And it doesn't bode well for the exchange that's going to unfold. And particularly if it's a, you know, a long-term kind of relationship, the beginning point for narcissism sets up this entitled attitude of control. At the very beginning of narcissism is an attitude of selfishness. It's all about me. And uh, along with that selfishness then uh, comes two of the narcissist's favorite words. And those are the words I deserve. <laughs> Here's what you need to do for me. Uh, likewise, uh, along with the, their need for control and that selfishness, another beginning point with narcissists is their sense of haughtiness. They honestly do think that they do life a lot better. Man, you would just be a whole lot better if you could figure that out and sooner, uh, sooner rather than later. And so they have this, this air of superiority that they bring. Likewise, another part of the beginning point with them is they have the agenda. It's, there's a fixed notion about how everything is supposed to be. And they're not at all bashful in letting you know what you did right and what you did wrong because in their minds, uh, there's, there's a narrow way that things ought to be done and they don't make room for variety and things of that nature. Likewise, part of their need to be in control over you has to do with their neediness. These are very insecure individuals. And so they're constantly looking to you to give them validation. And what better way to do that than for you to acquiesce and conform to them? Because then uh, they'll take that to mean, oh, I'm a somebody now. Look, they, they even agree with me. Uh, in addition, uh, as, as narcissists come toward you, um, they don't have a real desire to be honest and open about who they are or how inappropriate they may uh, be because <laughs> you may say, Hey, I don't want to be controlled by you. And it's like, well, anyway, let's, let's just move on and they'll just blow right past that. Uh, they can't honestly reflect on the impact that they leave on other individuals. And so when I say that narcissists want to be control, uh, in, in control, this attitude of entitlement becomes so strong that it exaggerates all of the other features of the narcissistic pattern. Narcissists want to be admired. Narcissists uh, will do anything to reinforce their better than thou kind of mindset. 
And, and I mean, simple little things like when, when you're in a room with them, they want the best chair or they want the, uh, uh, to be at the front of the line, so to speak, or they just want to have favored treatment. And it's just, it's built into the package. And uh, w when you say, well, I have a few wants too, it's like, well, that doesn't matter because I deserve and you don't. I'm entitled, you're not. Uh, as And another thing that we can say that goes right along with this is they're drawn towards a position of power. They have to be the authority. And uh, in, in other words, uh, there's one opinion in the room that matters and it's not yours. And so uh, as they engage with you, they think that they're entitled to your deference. It's like, if you just do what I say, then we're going to be fine. But actually, you owe it to me to do as I say. Now, I'm sure that so many of you have been in relationships where it's like, oh, yeah, I felt constantly controlled. And then when I try to talk to that person, it's like you can't get a breakthrough to them because they honestly do think of themselves as having the right to be this way to your exclusion. And it's like, well, what do you do? Let's, let's keep in mind that uh, these are individuals who have little to no empathy. And so you're going to need to factor that in. These are individuals who will argue with you uh, at the drop of a hat. Anger is constantly right there on the edge, and uh, they're they're very thin skinned and very easily you know taken off their course emotionally. These are individuals who criticize. You know, they they just have the gift of criticism, if you will. They're never pleased, and they're constantly wanting more, more, and then a little bit more. They have lots of double standards. For example, uh, you know, I've heard people talk about how the narcissist can spend plenty of money, but you can't. Or the narcissist can yell, but you better not raise your voice. Or uh, the narcissist can uh, 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 may say, well, you have to report into me, but they don't have to report into you. Lots of double standards, and they feel entitled to being in the, uh, the upper realm there. Harmonizing is not something they do. They're absurdly defensive when you try to engage with them. They won't take input from you. In fact, if, if that, uh, if that uh, becomes too strong of an issue with them, they'll go into a high punishing mode toward you. You will be sorry uh, if you don't go along and allow me my entitled position of control. Uh, they're unwilling to bend or negotiate. Uh, dominance is a constant uh, theme. And they're constantly the victim whenever you say, well, I beg to differ from you. Well, how dare you do this to me? So, it, it, like I say, when, when you engage with narcissists, it's not so much the attitude of control, which, I mean, that's bad enough, but it's the fact that they honestly think, you owe that to me. And it's so insulting to you, and uh, it, it's tied to their inclination to shame. They're actually projecting shame onto you that they can't come to terms with on the inside of themselves. The, the shame is there's something really defective about you if you don't just go along with my program. That was trained into them to think that way, but instead of coming to terms with it intrapersonally, they just turn around and they say, well, I'm going to be better at communicating that to everyone else. Um, and, and as a result... Um, they're, they're not going to have that sense of us and we that I mentioned. Now, when we go back to that question, what are you going to do? Knowing that that narcissist brings that entitled, uh, you need to do things my way uh, kind of notion. Um, let's, let's begin with the realization. This is somebody that has an underdeveloped conscience. And so any attempt that you make with them to try to uh, have a meeting of the mind is probably going to fall short, but it doesn't mean that you don't stand up and it doesn't mean that you don't say anything about it. What it does mean is you want to have your expectations about the net result that clearly established in advance. Uh, these are individuals who, when you speak to them, uh, keeping in mind, it's not just control, it's entitlement. It's like, you didn't get that memo, did you? And that's how they think. But I'm hoping you can say, well, I, I trust in myself. And I believe that when I have a thing to say, or I have an opinion or a preference, or I want to make a suggestion, I, I do make sense. And when they come along and say, well, everything's going to be fine and dandy as long as you just ditch what you just said and go along with me, uh, then you know, well, there's not going to be that, uh, that high level of you know warm fuzzies that comes from the end of it. 
But despite some of the revulsion that you may feel towards them, despite the temptation to come at them with all the fury that this can generate inside of you, uh, my response is I, inwardly, I, I have pity for people that think that way. It's like, are you that insecure and that you have that much of a feeling of inadequacy that you must dictate to other people how they're supposed to think about who they are? And the answer is, yeah, they really are. Uh, there's something very off with them. So that being the case, I'm hoping that you can remind yourself of something that they can't come to terms with, and that is your privilege to choose is not up for, for a vote. It's, it's not something that they get to pronounce over you. Your privilege to choose, your freedom, your sense of independence is something that's just built into your personality. We all want to have the privilege to choose for ourselves. And if the narcissist comes along and says, look, I'm entitled to be in the control position, I'm hoping you can decide in your opinion you are. In my opinion, that's not the case. And so boundaries means that you uh, you uh, move forward with what you know is wisest and best. You speak up and you, uh, you stand on your own reasonableness. And when the narcissist says, you're not playing along with the, the rules that I have established, my response is going to be, right, you're not entitled to take over my mind. Um, you see, one of the things that they uh, forget is, the best way to receive someone else's goodwill is to be a giver of goodwill. The, 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 the narcissist can't comprehend the best way to be in control is to quit trying to be so in control. People appreciate it when decency and goodness comes their way. You can't expect that from a narcissist, but I'm hoping that you live with that uh, as your leading point. And then when it, uh, it becomes obvious that this is a relationship that isn't going to have any depth, I'm hoping you can say, well, I'm giving my best effort. And if I'm dealing with somebody that can't do it, so be it. I'm going to uh, give my uh, best energies to people that know what to do with me. And I'm hoping that's something that, uh, that you can control and stay on top of despite their protests to the contrary. Now, I hope the video such as this can give you some good things to think about as you understand what you're dealing with, and that allows you to have much more of an informed decision about how, where you're going to proceed from here. If you've not already done so, I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button so we can keep more videos coming in your direction. I appreciate you allowing me to uh, be on your path with you. Uh, likewise, if you have a, a desire for therapy or a need for therapy, and many times when you're thinking about these things, it dredges up all sorts of things. I'm so pleased to be sponsored by the folks at betterhelp.com and the, the link is below. And if you have a need for therapy, I would strongly encourage you to go in that direction. Uh, and, uh, the, the reason I like BetterHelp is because it's accessible, it's online and it's, it's affordable. And, and I've had plenty of good feedback from that. Uh, in addition, I also have my therapeutic courses. And these are very extensive with um, uh, multiple videos per course with written documents and guided questions. And it's like signing up for an online class, Ready, Set, Connect, about having good connection skills. So this is me about establishing those boundaries we're talking about. Free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. We also have my webinars. We have our podcast, the Surviving Narcissism Podcast, and it's becoming very popular right now, and I'm so pleased we're getting a response there. Uh, we have my books, uh, our, our uh, website with many articles, plenty of resources for you. Okay, the narcissist thinks, not that they just want to be in control, they think it's their entitlement. They think it's their birthright when it's not. And, and when you're dealing with somebody like that, you're dealing with somebody who's operating with too much delusional thinking, don't go into their delusions with them. Instead, I'm hoping that you'll decide, and I'm on team healthy and I'm standing for dignity, respect, and civility. If somebody wants to join with me on that, I'd be glad to do so. And if not, then I, I can't afford to get pulled into that person's schemes. Because you see, I'm somebody that wants to, uh, to be a person of peace. And I'm going to be determined to have that peace despite their inclination to say, well, you can't have it. It's like, yes, I can. That's who I am.